Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Rahu Ketu Shift video. At the end of November, we have got a big shift of energy happening in our skies. And I'm going to talk you through what this means for us collectively, who does this apply to, what are the meanings behind the new shift? We're going to have Rahu in Pisces. We're going to have Ketu in Virgo. I am wearing green uh, in honor of Virgo. I have two choices today. So I went for green. I could have worn orange or a brown color to honor Jupiter, but I, I went for Mercury today. Uh, I'm going to talk you through all kinds of things, my predictions as well for the next, basically it's end of November and we're looking at a year and a half of time. I'm going to take you through my predictions collectively and also of course we're going to go through what this means for you as an individual and that you'll be able to find in your mini report. You can definitely watch from your ascendant and moon if you would like to watch from your sun as well you are welcome to do so i know that some of you benefit from that because you've got say for example a lot of planets conjunct your sun or you might have rahu or ketu conjunct your sun or something like that in that case it is good to to take a look from the sun's point of view now the first thing i want to cover off is will this shift be your nodal return so are you due for a nodal return if you are turning 18 37 55 or 74 then this will be your nodal return and I've got some extra dates written here so if you are now you can have a listen to these and you'll know if so if any of those years applies to you then you'll want to listen up so if you are born if you're 18, born the year and a half after April 2005, this will be very significant for you. If you are 37 years of age, born the year and a half after August 1986, this is going to be very significant for you. If you are 55, born the year and a half after January 1968, then this is important. And if you are 74 years of age, born the year and a half after July 1949 then you are having a nodal return and this is really important because every 18 or so years we we close out a big chapter and we open a big 18 year chapter okay so it is a very exciting time if you are any of those ages that I just called out. This is going to be especially significant for you. And if you are one of these people, look back 18 years. Well, if you're 18, you probably won't be looking back and reminiscing. You won't have many things to think about. But let's say, for example, you're 55. You know, you have got the ability to look back over the past 18 years and see what it is that you have achieved. I'll give you a very typical rundown of something I see in my practice. So 18 is when, and I'll say for example, a lady's life. I, I see this very typically. You know, a lady at 18 will finish high school and then, you know, um, she might get married, you know, in the, in the earlier years of that. And then 37, she'll have kids I see that a lot 36 37 I see a lot of women having kids at that time and then you know 55 60 comes along and the kids maybe they're starting to leave and then you know 74 people are looking at downsizing and, and this kind of thing these, these are very typical patterns but uh, equally you know depending on your Mahadasha setup you know especially if you're beginning a Mercury Mahadasha say for example at 55 you'll feel young again you'll feel new all over again you know it's, it's yeah you, you want to see your Mahadasha set up as well there's a lot that we take a look at but I just gave you a, a, a very generic kind of an idea there as to how you can look at you know the chapters and, and say for example a lady at 37 she's closing the chapter on being just by herself you know 30, 37 to 55 she she is uh you know always now going to be thinking about her her child or her children 
so you can see the different how the different chapters play out anyway let's take a look at the last time we had Rahu in Pisces and Ketu in Virgo can we look back at the last time this happened in our world and just take a look at the big major events that happened at that time so I've got the dates here we last had Rahu in Pisces Ketu in Virgo Feb 2005 to November 2006 so I did a Google search on what were the big events in 2005 what were the big events in 2006 and I'll just list a couple of events here I won't list too many but in 2005 there was um, Hurricane Katrina in the United States of America this reportedly cost America 108 billion dollars in damage it was a very severe thing uh, so definitely adverse weather events are, are here both in 2005 2006 uh, in terms of other things that were happening in the world one other thing I've noted is that YouTube started in 2005 and you'll see when I do my predictions thing I'll talk about what I see there with YouTube uh, also 2005 the Kashmir earthquake was a thing at that time now earthquakes are possible because we've got Ketu in Virgo and Hurricane Katrina now I, I, I should have probably done a little bit more research here but well we'll have a look at 2006 you'll see um, 2006 what are the things that I've got noted here I've got earthquake in Indonesia injuring 37,000 people but I've also got typhoon here in Philippines and Vietnam and in terms of adverse weather events we are looking at earthquakes shifts in earth because we've got Ketu in Virgo and Virgo is earth and then we've got Rahu in Pisces Pisces is water but Pisces to me is kind of um, far away dreamy places it is tropical kind of places and so Hurricane Katrina now I, I should have looked this up beforehand I'm so tempted to look up Google right now but I won't uh, but my understanding is that it was that a tropical kind of thing uh, my guess is it was but we've got here typhoon in Philippines and Vietnam yeah um, tropical type adverse weather events water too much water flooding uh, I think we are going to see flooding and I think there has been flooding over the last few weeks I do believe Burning Man that area was flooded which seems very unusual because you know and, and was that natural or not I don't know but you know my understanding is Burning Man is always in a desert like place and then but this year it was flooded so that's pretty unusual the other event that I've got listed here for 2006 is Google purchases YouTube for 1.65 billion uh, and you'll see why I'm bringing up YouTube because we'll talk about that in my predictions in a moment as for this time what are the dates this time so I've just covered off some dates for last time 2005 2006 and I've covered off just a few major historical events so we know what happened last time what are going to be the dates this time okay so the dates this time we've got here 29th November 2023 to 29 May 2025 now for roughly 80 percent of the transit we have Jupiter in Taurus and this is important to mention because Jupiter is the Lord of where Rahu will be seated so Jupiter is going to be significant also Jupiter transit lasts about a year in length so this this is significant here the other planets I want to take a look at are Saturn Pluto and Uranus because that paints a picture of what's going on so again I think it's from about 80 percent of the transit we will have Saturn in Aquarius we're going to have Pluto in Capricorn and we're going to have Uranus in Aries so let's take a look and each one of these in turn I just want to take a look from say Jupiter in Taurus to Uranus in Aries I'll just give you a couple of words so that we can paint a picture of what's happening in the collective so Jupiter in Taurus we're looking at expansion in resources we're also looking at expansion in speech 
we want to be able to speak and speak up Jupiter in Taurus we want to talk more uh, we've got Saturn in Aquarius so I'm saying that the energy here is largely the people protesting for equality okay the focus is on the people the focus is on leaders though as well we've got Pluto in Capricorn I've got here Lord of the underworld takes top leaders to task so and that's going to continue till about 2039 so that is a long transit Pluto in Capricorn as per sidereal Vedic astrology I know there are other astrologers talking about Pluto and Aquarius but here in our system it's still in Capricorn and we've also got Uranus in Aries okay and that's a very important energy long-standing energy which is indicating an individual's struggle to be their true self so we can see what our, you know what the other large planets are doing at this time which is really important to, to factor all of that in here because you know it, it paints a more full picture I'll talk you through some dates of these outer planets so Jupiter goes into Taurus on the 1st of May 2024 Saturn goes into Pisces on 30th March 2025 and Uranus goes into Taurus on 19th March 2025 so we can see that our next big shift and I'll also have a look at when Jupiter leaves Taurus but my guess is again it's around I think it'll be around May um, at least so we can see that March to May and that's May 2025 so we can see that March to about May 2025 that's going to be the time of our next really big shift and that's going to be a huge shift because we're going to have Saturn going into Pisces and end of May we're going to have Rahu Ketu shift as well so 2025 astrologically is going to be hectic that is going to be there's going to be a lot of changes 2025 2024 I think there will be uh, some stability interestingly because Ketu will be in Virgo and I think that is going to provide some stability across 2024 now what is going to be the most intense period of this Rahu Ketu shift well the first 48 minutes of arc is Gandanta and it's the first 48 minutes of arc because Rahu Ketu go in the opposite direction if I was reading any other planet I would say it's the last 48 minutes of Pisces is Gandanta but in this instance it's the first 48 minutes of arc is Gandanta so Rahu will be Gandanta from 28th November to about 12th December and this could be intense energy this could be an adverse weather event at this time this could be people reacting to a shift in energy there's just a, a strange feeling at this time it could go like that now let's take a look at the meaning let's take a look at what does Rahu Ketu represent this time okay so we had Rahu in Aries Aries was representing the individual self people were innovating with who they are who they want to be Ketu was in Libra Ketu was in Libra and that was actually suppressing our relationships and that was kind of suppressing people from say for example uh, being in relationships with others by the way I am going to point you to my Venus meditation check that out I'm actually going to put up a um, comment by one of you this was such a beautiful comment thank you to wh whoever wrote this it was really sweet you mentioned that you listened to this meditation for 40 days and yes that that is what we do isn't it I recently just completed a 40-day mantra 
meditation thing myself. It was two lines from the Hanuman Chalisa. I just did it, you know, my mantra beads and I would do it you know, every day. And um, I did a 40 day thing too. But somebody listened to this Venus meditation for 40 days and she mentioned that she met someone. And I thought that was so incredibly sweet. So if you've had that Ketu in Libra energy for the last year and a half and, you know, you feel like you haven't been out or met interesting people or whatever, maybe try listening to that meditation and see if it helps you. So that's a little tip there. Uh, but let's go back to, okay, so we, we know what energy we're leaving. Okay, we're leaving the whole individual versus the other type thing. Okay, so we're leaving that behind. What are we going into now? So we've got Rahu in Pisces. And Pisces is the water element. Pisces is lauded by Jupiter. What is Pisces? All right, now Pisces is the oldest one. Pisces is just incredible. There are no boundaries here. There is an understanding or a recognition or a recognition of the quantum soup that is reality without thought. So thought is the air element, okay? Uh, and there is no air element happening here. This is just Rahu in. This is just straight up Rahu in. I want to have a look at a transit wheel right now. <laughs> I want to bring one up. I want to bring up Aries. I want to have a look at this. Um, yeah, there's no aspect from Saturn. None. Yeah, cool. So, I, I mean, it's true to say this. This is the understanding of the quantum soup that is reality without thought. I think if you've been feeling isolated, if you've been feeling like you've been lacking connection with your fellow man, with your fellow human being, maybe you've been really feeling very lonely. We've had Ketu in Libra. You might have been feeling lonely over the past year and a half. Well, that is set to change. There is going to be a stronger feeling of connectedness. You will feel in some deep way more connected with everyone. You might be living alone, but you won't feel so lonely. You'll feel connected. There'll be more connection. Okay, now what else is Pisces? So Pisces is deep spirituality. It's isolation as well. One can be isolated here in Pisces. It's a fascinating thing. On the one hand, you can be very isolated in Pisces, but you're not lonely. There's no loneliness. You can feel more connected. It's quite incredible. So we've got deep spirituality, isolation, holidays, fantasy, entertainment, procrastination, energy loss, hotels, prisons, and hospitals. And we can sum up hotels, prisons, and hospitals as places where we do not do any work. Where is Venus exalted? Venus is exalted in Pisces. Venus does not like to do work. Okay, whenever Venus is in uh, Virgo or in Capricorn, Venus is not very happy in those places because those places are just full of work. Venus doesn't particularly like to be there. Mind you, if you have Venus in Virgo or Venus in Capricorn, you will experience a love for your work that other people will admire. Other people, so you may not have a great love life, but you will love your work so much and get a lot of fulfillment from your work and what you do. That potential is there. But here we are, we're talking about Pisces. We're talking about where Venus is exalted and why is she exalted there? It's because she, at her heart, at her core, Venus doesn't like to do work. Venus likes shopping and having fun. Now let's take a look at Ketu in Virgo. So we've got Virgo here, the earth element, and Virgo is lauded by Mercury, and I'm wearing my green color for Mercury. Now, what is Virgo? Virgo, I've got here, is experts. Okay, we've got lawyers, we've got doctors, we've got healers, we've got consultants, we've got experts here. We've got the people who know, the people who know the rules, who make the rules. Okay, Virgo is the rules. Mercury is all about rules as well. Rules, logic, precision. I've also got here Virgo is also the height of ego and this can be healthy ego of course. It can be 
uh, unhealthy ego as well. Virgo represents leaders and the material world. Virgo is also service, also helping people. Virgo is also very much about drawing the line. We draw the line. Lawyers do that. Lawyers draw the line, or, or you know, and, and, and yeah, that this is okay, that's not okay. Drawing the line, the line has to be drawn. That's very mercurial precision. Arguments are possible here with Virgo. Lawyers, right? They make arguments. And this concept of perfection, perfectionism is always associated with Virgo. Why? And the reason for that is because Virgo is full of chaos. Okay, it is a Dushtana, right? One of the Dushtana houses, sixth house. So that's full of chaos. And this is why, you know, Saturn loves being in there. Saturn wants to bring order to chaos. Rahu loves to get in there. Rahu wants to, to improve the world and fix the world and do stuff. And, you know, what, who else does well there? Mars. Mars loves a good fight. You know, Mars wants to get involved. And, yeah, and, and there's, there's fighting the good fight. You know, there is um, justice. Justice, yes, very sort of Virgo and Libra. Libra is very much about justice as well. Yeah, so they, these are the areas that we're looking at in life. All right, now let's take a look. Oh, we've got 21 minutes. No, I'll, if I need to, um, this will time out, but that's fine. I'm just going to add a new memory card and we'll keep going. So my predictions for this time, I have got a bunch of little bullet points here. There's not too many. I'll just run through them uh, as quickly as I can. So my predictions for this time period. Okay, so the first one, it is actually about YouTube. It's about the platform that we're on right now. I've got here, YouTube is turning 18 this year. So I predict that there could be some big things happening with YouTube. Now, what are those big things? I'm not exactly sure about that. I, I feel like some of these big things might be to do with freedom of speech. Of course, like that is the big topic of the day. What YouTube will do is from zero to 18 has been a chapter and now YouTube's going to open a new chapter 18 to what are we about 37 or so, isn't it? So 18 to about 36, 37, right? So this is a brand new chapter for YouTube. Yeah. And, and, and how is that going to look? What's that going to be like? I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but I know that big things will happen with YouTube. That's for sure. And I think it will be to do with freedom of speech because we're going to have Jupiter in Taurus and Taurus is voice and speech and all this kind of thing. And Jupiter is expansion. People are wanting to talk. People are wanting to connect. People are wanting to come together. Coming together is a huge theme. Uh, I think it's going to be a big theme. People are going to need to come together. We've got Saturn in Aquarius. People are protesting. People are not happy with what's going on in the world and we need to unite. And we've got so many forces that for centuries have been dividing us. And I think we're all massively waking up to this and we're going to come together and we're going to transform the world. That is what I'm, that's some wishful predicting there. I, I do hope that comes true. Uh, what's my next prediction? All right, I've got here. Now this one is a bit of a funny one and I don't have, I just got one line written and it says, more alien stuff will happen. <laughs> I don't know what I've written alien stuff as well that is very inarticulate but that is what I've got here um, and I've got here this whole force rises in intuition yes it will and I think that a lot of what's happening on the planet today when we're looking at artificial intelligence and you know the stories that are being peddled out and People talk about the narrative and people talk about disinformation. Like, look at all the new words that we've got, all this new lingo. You know, um, all these things are forcing rises in intuition. We've got Rahu in Pisces. As I was saying, we've got Rahu in Pisces. Okay, so Rahu in Pisces, that is the all is one. We're all connected, spirituality, uh, you know, 
we're, we're all connected somehow. So definitely the people are going to become more intuitive. Definitely. It's already happening. It's already happening. People talk like that so much more on, uh, you know, when I watch various commentators speak about culture and what's happening today. And people will say, yeah, I sense that there's just something not right or this smells fishy. God, I've heard that phrase a lot. Smells fishy, right? Fish, Pisces. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Pe people are going to tap into their intuition more than ever before. I've got here big weather events will be connected in with the water element and the earth element. So we can have typhoons, hurricanes and earthquakes are possible. Uh, are those going to be natural? Are those going to be man-made? That I can't particularly comment on. Um, sometimes, I mean, we can see things that are, you know, if it's man-made, I mean, well, that can be mercurial energy. So yeah, these things could be man-made. Mercury is like uh, Gemini hands-on. I always tend to think that that, that can be man-made. Mercury energy. So yes, these some of these events, yeah, it could well, I mean, we've been talking about that, you know, here and there already, haven't we, about, about that kind of thing. Uh, I've got here, cancel culture may experience backlash, which I, I, I would be happy about. I, I haven't been a fan of cancel culture. I, I don't like this concept of, um, you know, oh, well, you, you know, it, it, cancel culture to me is that whole thing of, oh, well, you like this person, so therefore I will unsubscribe from you. You know, I, I'm going to throw you in the bin now. And it's like, and I, I'm not a fan of this because this has happened to me quite a bit here on the internet, um, where people have just gone, oh, no, you've said something positive about Nicki Minaj or you said something positive about Novak Djokovic. Oh, I have to unsubscribe from you now. I've had that quite a bit. So... Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't mind if um, cancel culture to tones down. I think it might, though. The, the reason I say that is because cancel culture is, is very much a critical energy. We've got Ketu passing through Virgo. There could be some suppression on criticism uh, across this time. I've got here, critics might be suppressed while people begin to open up and express their emotions more freely. Rahu is going to be in Pisces. Rahu is going to be in Pisces and that is expressing emotions. Rahu is in a watery place. Expressing emotions is going to be important. Hopefully that doesn't get hijacked. I mean, that has been hijacked in this world, hasn't it? In that, um, what do I mean by this hijacking thing? It's like the elite powers that be, they kind of sense or see a wound in culture and they fuel it. You know, like, ooh, race, people are touchy about race, let's fuel that and, and create division there. You know, what, wherever it's perceived that people are touchy or whatever, and it's all this manipulation energy, you know. But I mean, again, I think everyone's waking up to all of this. You know, and that's when you look at psychology and that's Saturn in Aquarius people are learning about what is narcissist empath and the whole narcissist empath dynamic. There's a lot of manipulation in there. People exploit another person's weakness and all that kind of thing goes on there. So yeah, but I, I think if we're looking at Rahu in Pisces, there can be something honest and pure and good about it, you know, where people express genuine emotions. I, I can see that happening. And that maybe the criticism is toned down. I'm, I'm certainly hoping for that. Um, I've got here, people who have a steady job will keep their job. However, there can be redundancies uh, and, and people who do lose jobs at this time. That, that is possible. The, the job scene will be interesting to observe because Ketu can be a sustaining energy, a stabilizing energy, and it's going to be in an earthy place. So I actually, I, I feel like a lot of people will maintain their jobs. That's not so good for growth. If you're wanting promotions, if you're wanting to step up, that might be hard. 
but to sustain what you've got going on for a year and a half. I think that should be. People should be able to do that. More so than people losing their jobs. But again, if you do lose your job at this time, always believe that this is taking me to a better place or this is giving me an opportunity to create something I enjoy even more. Okay. Other predictions for this time I've got here, interest rates will remain high. I've got here, they could go up a bit more, but will, they will be stable. I do think that interest rates will probably be stable across the time. If, and this is because Ketu is in Virgo. Virgo, to me, from what I've seen, Virgo sixth house is debt. Some astrologers will say um, debt is eighth house. I, I do understand and appreciate that. Yes, that is that is that is true. But from uh, personal experience and working with clients, and as I've seen debt being a sixth house kind of a thing. Having Ketu here, I do feel like that's a stabilizing energy. If we had Rahu going into Virgo or the sixth, then I'd be saying, well, interest rates could really fluctuate. But from what I'm seeing, I think uh, I, I could imagine that things will be quite stable in terms of interest rates. We'll watch it. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. And you can always come and comment on this video, you know, in the future. The next prediction I have is about luxury goods makers. This is an interesting one. I don't know much about uh, this area of life. I, I don't purchase any of these things. You know, um, I shop mostly at Primark and I don't buy anything from luxury goods makers, but I do watch things on the internet, interesting things and, and people talking about these things. And one of the things I've heard is that, for example, Louis Vuitton, one of these top luxury brands, they've got a hotel that is due to open. And I read somewhere that it's going to open spring, summer of 2024. Um, and some reports say in 2027. But it's interesting that they're saying this Louis Vuitton hotel could open spring, summer 2024. That is very interesting. I've also heard as well that luxury goods makers are shifting to provide experiences as opposed to selling everyone more stuff. So yeah, th th this, is, this is very interesting. So a lot of these luxury goods makers like Louis Vuitton, they are creating hotels, spas, restaurants. Okay, and why are they doing this? So one of the reasons is, well, it must be because people are not buying their overpriced stuff. <laughs> okay, so that's reason number one. People aren't buying their stuff. Um, I've got here, people will seek experiences and travel as opposed to buying physical products. I think this trend is very much going to continue. We've got Rahu going into Pisces. Pisces is holidays and experiences and hospitality, travel, tourism, faraway places. Rahu in Pisces is also the dream. It's, it's, it's the dream, you know, it's, um, so that's why I brought up this thing about luxury goods makers. But yeah, people are seeking experiences and travel as opposed to buying physical products. This is also showing that people are becoming more spiritual because they're not so interested in owning physical stuff. I know that does sound a little bit um, like that famous phrase that's going around, you will own nothing and be happy about it. But the truth of it is, like when I hear that statement, I actually think, well, that is me. <laughs> I can, you know, I, I own nothing and I'm happy about it. But no, but I, I, I um, because when you're on the spiritual path, that is actually what ends up happening. You don't own much and you're very happy about it. But like, I don't like elite top people saying that obviously and I am you know um, yeah but but there is it's interesting see because when I look back at my life I never bought any of these 
Louis Vuitton handbags or Chanel handbags. I never, I don't, I've never bought a Chanel lipstick or none of that. I don't spend any money on any of that. When I look across my life, I've spent all my spare money on experiences. I spent all my spare money on traveling overseas to hear this person's lecture and go to their workshop and be trained personally by the top people. And, you know, I have sat in the audiences of, um, so many incredible people, Eckhart Tolle, Deepak Chopra, uh, I'm trying to think, Graham Hancock, who else have I, and then, you know, meet them afterwards, get the book signed, do all of that, and um, I, I flew to Prague, uh, I studied reconnective healing there, I flew to the United States, I did work in person with Denise Lynn, I, I lived on her ranch, on her property, you know, I mean, it was just incredible, so that's where I've spent all my money on experiences and spiritual retreats and travel and all this kind of thing. Caroline Mace, I got to attend one of her workshops, like just, yeah, you name it, whoever, whatever, like, kind of uh, top name in, in spirituality, I, I went and I was there and I love all that. So... But I, and then this is the thing, I've always been spiritual, I've never been materialistic. But what I am observing is that materialistic type people uh, are not so into physical products anymore. There is this thing called quiet luxury at the moment. And that's Saturn in Aquarius. It's like nobody's flashing their bling anymore. That's just not cool. Like that's over. You know, and I, I think people are becoming more spiritual. I really do. Got here, people will long for and seek freedom and spirituality more than seeking security. Yes, that's Rahu in Pisces. You see, seeking security is Ketu in Virgo. But Rahu in Pisces is seeking freedom. It's seeking spirituality. It's seeking experiences. It's seeking the time of your life. It's seeking the dream. Got here, people will explore their spiritual sides and light worker businesses should do very well across this time. I certainly hope so. Uh, I've got here, new media will flourish. But by the way, back, back to this point about you will own nothing and be happy about it. I, I, don't, I, I, I don't like that elite people are saying those things and I don't support that, even though I kind of live it. <laughs> okay? it's like, that is the truth of my actual life. I live that statement. I, I, don't, I do own nothing and I'm, I'm happy about it, but... Um, but I don't want that for humanity. I, I don't want that at all. And what happens is, and this is the thing that the elite don't understand, they don't understand that if, if we all lose our jobs and they're not keeping everyone busy, you know, kind of thing, as they have done traditionally with jobs, but this, we've all lost our jobs and we all have time on our hands and we're all going down all these rabbit holes and we're all figuring everything out, it's like they don't realize that they've just ignited a mass awakening, an incredible mass awakening of humanity. And people are going to unite. It, 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 it won't be good for these elite people who are peddling these ideas. I just, yeah, I, I see this transit, this Ravikethu transit as bringing us closer together, more awakening, more realizations. Also, we've got... Um, Rahu in, in Pisces, that secrets, we're going to figure out a whole bunch more secrets. Okay, so that's another thing. We're going to figure out so many secrets. I've got here, new media will flourish. Jupiter will escape Saturn's aspect while in Taurus. The desire for freedom of speech will unite a lot of people. It really will. Um, just recently I was watching... I think his name is Reverend, oh gosh, let me get his name right, Reverend Calvin Robinson. And I found out through Reverend Brett Murphy on YouTube that Calvin Robinson has been cancelled. And I was shocked. I was like, what? How could they do that? He's such a wonderful, articulate man, that lovely Calvin Robinson. And I couldn't believe that he has been cancelled and yeah they're doing that they are doing that to people but we're hearing about it and we're all going to unite we're all going to support 
the good strong voices. I think these elite don't realize, they, they, to me they're kind of acting like desperate people and their clumsy maneuvers at this time are just rapidly accelerating awakening in more people who weren't concerned about this stuff but who are now getting into it. So yeah, I think that's all pretty interesting. The other thing I wanted to say about you know how yes, people have lost jobs, we've all gone down the rabbit holes because we've had time to do so and you know we figured out a whole bunch of stuff. And that thing about you will own nothing and be happy about it. Well, we can be, we can own nothing and be happy about it. But the thing is, if we don't have much, and if we've got nothing, then what we are extremely sensitive to is when they try to take away our freedom. We're definitely not going to be happy about that. There's no way. Like, I don't need to own lots of stuff and be a billionaire. That's not my goal in life. But it's like, you try to take away a tiny bit of my freedom and I'm not going to be happy about that. That, that's what I, yeah, sorry, I keep going back to that old point. I keep going back up there, but that's because I need to say that part, which is that, yeah, you, you know, we have nothing. So if you try to take away our freedom, that's going to be a huge problem. We're going to fight for that. That's for sure. But yeah, so I've got here, did I mention this point about new media will flourish? Sorry, it's been so choppy. Oh, look at that. We're at the 16 minute mark as well. I'm taking way too much time. New media will flourish. Jupiter will escape. Saturn's aspect while in Taurus. Yes, this is good. The desire for freedom of speech will unite a lot of people. Yes, and that's what I saw with those two reverends. I was just listening to one of them today on YouTube and I think people of all different faiths and all different areas are going to unite. They're going to support each other. I mean, yeah, new media will definitely flourish uh, across this transit. I've got here on my next slide, oh my gosh, I've got two more slides. Wow, we've got a lot to cover here. Um, more predictions, I've got here B.V. Raman loves Ketu in Virgo. He says that this is the best placement for Ketu in fact. And the reason he likes it so much is because it suppresses enemies and diseases. So people's chronic health issues can improve at this time, especially if you go down the path of natural healing. Uh, you can have the chance to get out of some chronic health issue at this time. And especially if you study, you know, the right books and the right things. I will tell you a couple of those books now. Um, Definitely Healing and Recovery by Dr. David Hawkins. I've read that. I've used that to help heal my own type of stuff. Uh, Letting Go by Dr. David Hawkins as well. And of course, the classic Louise Hay, You Can Heal Your pretty sure it's you can heal your life. I'm pretty sure she's got other ones like you can heal your body, you can heal your mind. I think she's got a few, but I'll, I'll put the classic one on the screen by my side. Now, more predictions. I've got here spiritually based service businesses will continue to flourish. Herbal based and nature based medical practices will thrive. We're going to see so many new grassroots medical type establishments start to come up at this time this i mean this may not be the best transit for that kind of thing but you'll see they'll they're they're starting now it's happening now but here some people will be isolated during this time equally many people will come together put that in quote marks because as per the lennon and mccartney song come together if you have a look at the charts of both of these men you know, they both do have either Pisces, significant Pisces or 12th house in their charts. And yeah, I do think this song, Come Together, is a good one for this time. Now, if we take a look at the final slide, I've got here, banking will experience growth and innovation from March 2025 onwards when Saturn and Uranus will shift. 
Secrets of all kinds will be revealed. I've covered that. Um, this one's an interesting one. Shadow governments may form, made by the people, to hold actual governments to account. And this concept of shadow governments came up in a talk that I saw by Richard Vobes. I'm pretty sure that's his name. I'll put it up by my side. If I can find the video where he talked about a shadow council, I do believe it was. That was amazing. So I'll see if I can find that video. Uh, I, I might just put the title of it here. I might not be able to link to it, guys. I'm going to do my best, but got here currently we are in a number seven year and next year will be an eight year followed by a nine year so I believe next year will be a time where hard-working people can get ahead okay especially if your hard work is Ketu like in nature so that means you do not care about what the rewards are okay Ketu is surrender you surrender you leave it to God and God, I always believe God or Saturn will kind of catch me up sort of thing. So it's always worth working hard. I don't think we've got too much longer of these harsh energies to go. I think some of the worst of it, I mean, the worst of it was 2020 to 2023. That was bad. But we are dealing with some pretty terrible repercussions of that time and definitely mental health uh, is, is, is not in good shape now. And that's Saturn in Aquarius and that's right through till March, 2025. Mental health is, is in a bad way and people aren't talking about it. There aren't too many statistics or numbers about it, but it is not good. Um, that is for sure. And I think with Ra the beauty of Rahu in Pisces is that I think people are going to be a bit more connected, a bit more caring, a bit more sensitive in good ways, you know. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm liking Rahu in Pisces, ultimately. I am liking that energy for our world at this time. It's needed and it's, it's good. So I've, I've gone through all my little notes, but the overall summary uh, is that, yeah, I, I think Rahu in, in Pisces, this is, this is good for our world right now, especially with Saturn in Aquarius there. Saturn in Aquarius is making people feel alone, isolated, and yeah, the, the psych psychological things, the mental health type stuff, Saturn in Aquarius is tough right now. It's, it's, it's harsh. But Rahu in Pisces gives us some things to look forward to, and um, there, there are some, some nice energies here coming in with Rahu in Pisces, I do believe. Let's see how it goes. Let's, you know, you guys keep me informed. You can write in the comments below as you get into this energy and you can come back and, and give me your feedback and let me know how this transit is playing out for you. I do read all the comments. They're all really great. And um, thank you. Thank you to everybody who comments. Gosh, I, re I really wanted to say that at the beginning of this video, but then... I had to get right into the into the work. All right, we are going to take a look. We're going to go through the entire zodiac. So anyone who's going to stay, uh, you're very welcome. This is going to time out. I'll just let it time out and I'll just, you know, what do I have here? Do you know, I wrote so many notes about this time and um, yeah, there is a lot. Right. Those of you who are going to watch the whole thing, and do you know, if you are a student of astrology, it's advisable to watch the entire thing because then you'll get to see, you know, how the person is seeing all the different signs and it can be um, a good educational experience to, uh, wherever possible, uh, I like to try and sit and watch you know, the whole thing of what other people do. I have not watched anybody else's Rahu Ketu video at all. They come up on my dashboard and I'm like, no, 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 I don't want to look at it. I'm saving them for when I go home to Sydney and I'm with my mom. She loves to watch what all the other astrologers have to say because you're never a prophet in your own home. 
you know, she, she doesn't watch my one, but she likes to watch everyone else. So we'll watch them when I go home to Sydney. I'll watch the other Raihu Ketu videos then, but I haven't watched anybody's. But when sometimes if I do get the chance to catch a transit video, which I haven't watched anybody's transit video for a long time, but I, I have been known to sit and watch the whole thing. I think it's, a, it's yeah, it is a good educational thing to do. <clears throat> if you um, if you are a student of astrology, you know. All right, so let's go. We're going to take a look at all of these. Right. Aries. Aries, welcome. This is Aries Ascendant. Aries Moon or Aries Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now we have Rahu in Pisces. And that's going to be in your 12th house. So what you might find here is that natural breaks, and I'm talking breaks of time, you, should, you might have just periods of time where you actually get to enjoy yourself. So natural breaks in your life might appear, which you can use to travel, indulge in spirituality, or use that time to create your creative path or your light worker business or to do what you really want to do. It, it, you know, you'll find that time will naturally appear here and there. It might not be huge amounts of time, but time will appear that you'll be able to do your own thing. I've got here with Jupiter in Taurus in the second house, your voice and what you have to say is much needed either by your clients or your social media platforms or the people around you or your family members, definitely your family members. Okay, you could end up being quite the counsellor to your family members at this time. You'll have all this wisdom for your family and definitely people that are close to you. Spiritually, this transit can grow you so much. Now, if we take a look at Ketu in Virgo, that's going to be in your sixth house. So how you financially sustain yourself should be quite stable across this time. So let's say you go into this transit with a stable job and you're okay there. You know, uh, that should sustain. That, that job, it, it, it should be there, okay, for well for, for the whole transit definitely unless of course there's something big happening with your company and i do know that there are companies that are closing that are you know there are um, branches of places that are closing down and, and things are shutting down that is happening but i do see that ketu in virgo i think things should sustain largely now, if you do lose a job, because there are, you know, and, and that's Saturn in Aquarius or Pluto in Capricorn, okay, so things are being demolished, it is true. So if you do lose a job, know that it is being cleared to bring in something better, okay. And if you lose a job at this time, that is one of the natural breaks that could happen. Do take a break. Uh, don't just rush into the next thing. If you can try to enjoy some of that Rahu in Pisces energy. That would be really good for you. I've got here, take a break in between jobs if you can, as Rahu is in Pisces, which does encourage escapism, holidays, or for you to indulge yourself somehow. So if you can do that, that would be good because then what you'll find is that you will return to work refreshed you return to work recharged really okay so that would be a good thing for you definitely though you can grow a lot spiritually in this transit aries i'm very excited for you in that regard thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome taurus taurus welcome thank you so much for joining so this is taurus Ascendant, Taurus Moon or Taurus Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now you've got Rahu in Pisces in your 11th house. So this transit will encourage you to grow your finances, but most importantly, how you bring wealth 
and opportunities in your life that is set to expand so your ability to bring in opportunities should expand at this time you will be able to build a social media platform if that's something you want to do or you could be building additional sources of income across this transit as Jupiter is in your first house your presence is personally needed by your work or your clients and I've got the quote here Woody Allen says showing up is 80% of life you will definitely need to show up Taurus if you do that then you're going to create amazing things all you have to do is show up that's pretty cool and it's that kind of thing showing up is 80% of life so that it, this is that kind of thing Taurus where you just want to be ready you want to have the wardrobe ready you want to have the shoes polished you want to have you know your work bag ready on the Sunday night or whatever it is whatever things you need to do it's like it's that readiness are you ready like if that big opportunity was to come in are you ready to just take it it's that you want that readiness to be there now Ketu in Virgo will be in your fifth house so this is a really good time to learn new things especially if you are spiritual in nature however don't feel the pressure of this I've got here you learning across the next 1.5 years is for the sheer joy of it okay so it's not like you're learning things because because you have to or there's pressure or any of that no I've got here you already know enough to be the teacher now so share your wisdom don't feel you aren't qualified enough but if you do do studies it's like you're adding to all this wealth of knowledge that you already have okay so you're doing it for enjoyment you're doing it as extra if you're going to be learning new skills at this time I've got here if you meditate or have a spiritual practice you will intuitively gain any answer that you want at this time okay so this is because Ketu is in your fifth house fifth house is a lot of knowledge there ancient texts wisdom all that kind of thing your Ketu will be there so that's the body without the head okay and the body is intuitive the body is clairsentient the body can just absorb and pick up information you can in a clairsentient sort of way figure out the answers okay so that is really cool Taurus I'm loving this transit for you I think it's going to be a good one I think it'll be productive uh, if you use it well this could be an incredibly good time so thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Gemini Gemini welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Gemini ascendant Gemini moon or Gemini sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology now Rahu in Pisces will be in your 10th house this is the ideal transit to build material career success Gemini you have got the best Rahu transit when it comes to building career this is the one this is the one to have and you've got it you've got it for a year and a half this is very good energy for building career I've got here you can create material abundance at this time you can go up in career you can get a promotion you can be seen you can be recognized for what you do and your energy should be good at this time as well now Ketu in Virgo is going to be in your fourth house so home will become a sacred place of sanctuary okay and when you need to recharge go home and do nothing and just meditate just meditate do something creative that you get into the zone you know if you're not a meditator maybe there's something some fine craft or something you do with your hands or something that where you get that meditative sort of feeling I've got the note here don't try to make home perfect okay there might be temptation to do that where Ketu is Ketu sometimes likes to try to perfect that area but instead of turning home into a project 
definitely don't do that see if you your home can just be what it is it'll sustain itself somehow there's something about this sustaining energy that's going to come in here and it but your home is going to sustain you you know so um yeah, it's, you know, as I see this energy, if home is just a spiritual sanctuary, that's going to be very ideal for you. And yeah, no projects. Like if you want to renovate the kitchen, maybe, but uh, yeah, this may not be the best energy for that. It could be, equally it could be. But I've got here, view home as a place to recharge so you can fuel up and get back out into the world. And this is why I'm kind of saying don't, don't do the kitchen renovation project. Be out in the world earning the money. That's going to that's be more important. You want to be out in the world. Rahu's in the 10th. So you want to be making the most of that side of the Rahu Ketu axis. You want to be out in the world, definitely. With Jupiter in your 12th house, you can grow a lot spiritually and expand your spiritual self a lot at this time. Yes, you can definitely do that. And the other thing is Jupiter in the 12th and Rahu in the 10th. This is travel as well. And this can be work-related travel. Okay, so you might be traveling. Definitely, if you can prioritize work and make the money okay this is like a year and a half to with that good rahu energy in the 10th you could really profit at this time uh you could travel through your work there's a lot you can do you might be tempted to make your home perfect but this is not the best energy for that uh yeah is is what i'm seeing here Gemini, this is a beautiful transit i really do wish you all the best with this one enjoy it and yeah, this is, this is a year and a half of really great energy. So definitely enjoy this. Your Rahu in the 10th is superb. So enjoy that, Gemini. We are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon or Cancer Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now Rahu in Pisces will be in your ninth house. So this is a great time to increase your fortune, your wealth and how you bring in wealth. Because Jupiter will mostly be in your 11th house. I should be telling this to all the signs. It's from 1st May onwards that Jupiter is in Taurus. Um, I might put a little note for the other signs if I've forgotten to say. But yeah, 1st May 2024 onwards. So Jupiter is mainly going to be in your 11th house. Yeah, look at that, 9th and 11th. That's These are big fortune kind of houses. 9th is fortune for sure. When it comes to money lords, I do look a lot at 2, 5. Sometimes I look at 7, but 7 is really marriage. But 2, 5, 9, 11. These are the big money lords that I like to look at. Um... And the fact that you've got Rahu in the 9th and Jupiter in the 11th, it's really good. Lord of 9th is in the 11th. It's very, very good. So it's a good time for money to come in. It's a great time for you to be seen. A great time for you to teach, to share what you know. It's a really good time to travel. Work-related travel will be especially good for you at this time. Now Ketu in Virgo will be in your third house. So your mind is going to be strong at this time and your mind can act like a bit of a sponge. You can learn a lot of new knowledge to add to all the lifetimes of knowledge you have already accumulated. If you want to learn how to improve and build your financial stability, you will find the right teachers, the right mentors, the right information at this time. Cancer, I'm loving this transit for you. This is looking really, really good. Enjoy this great energy that you've got. And we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Leo Ascendant, Leo Moon, or Leo Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now we've got Rahu in Pisces in your eighth house. So relationships with partner or in-laws might require more attention at this time. 
It's possible that life provides you with some natural breaks so that you can take a holiday now and then. You, you might want to just physically rest and recharge. Uh, if there are no natural breaks or chance for a holiday, this is the kind of thing where you might want to book in a spa day or something like that just here and there. It would be good for you to truly relax if you can. This is a great transit for those who are starting a light worker practice or if you want to transition careers to doing something that you love and that you're really passionate about. Or you want to start up a side business or a moonlighting business or a side hustle or whatever. And Jupiter is in Taurus in your 10th house. So yeah, there's career here being expanded, but there, there could be transition energies or changes with your work or something along those lines. I've also got here new occult gifts could crack open for you at this time or this could be a time where you really make some headway or progress in developing your intuition, uh, developing other sort of internal gifts and abilities and skills you know, that, that you have within. There, there are new things that could really crack open at this time. Now Ketu in Virgo will be in your second house. How you have been earning as you enter the transit should be stable across the period. So if you're in a regular job as you enter this, this period of time, that should sustain. Okay, so I do believe that should sustain. It can be difficult to get a promotion or something like that. It's interesting, you've got Jupiter in Taurus in the 10th. So it's like expansion is possible for you in your career. If, let's say for example, Jupiter is four places away from natal Jupiter, you could get a promotion at this time. But if that's not the case, uh, and depending on the setup of your chart, yeah, I'm seeing that it's most likely that you'll maintain things at a certain place. It might, it could, it might be hard to get a promotion, that, that is a possibility. But you'll maintain how you earn money across this period is, is what I'm seeing. I've got here, if there is a loss of clients or a loss of job, know that it's okay. The universe will help you make up for it later and it will get you something better later on. If a natural break occurs in your workflow, use the time to do spiritual studies or to rest and recharge for when the energy picks back up again. That's going to be important, Leo. But overall, it's looking like a good transit. This, this is a good transit for you. What I would say is that this is a, a good transit where you don't want to rush anything. You just, you want to go slowly and grow slowly. This is like a slow and steady sort of a um, thing here is, is what I'm seeing. Leo, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. So this is Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Moon or Virgo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now Rahu in Pisces will be in your seventh house. So anyone who has been chronically single, this could change. Now, if you are in a committed relationship, the partnership might require some more attention at times. Uh, you might travel together, which could be really fun. So this could be a time where you travel with your partner. This could be a time where you do business overseas as well. It's good for expanding a business if you are self-employed. Yeah, this is definitely an excellent transit for self-employed people or those who do foreign business or social media. Your social media platform could really grow across this transit. Now Ketu in Virgo will be in your first house. And with Jupiter's aspect from your ninth house, you can become really wise at this time. And you can take in a lot of new knowledge across this transit. 
This is really great for students or anyone studying a degree program or any of that. Uh, at times you may feel that you don't have the physical energy to execute your plans. And I've got in brackets here, you might think faster than you can take action. That is the story of my life. <laughs> I, can, I can always think up ideas. Um, physically, I just can't execute them. Oh well, that is how it goes sometimes. I've got here, you might become more clairsentient at this time. Yeah, this could be a really amazing transit. So look, if you find that you just don't have the physical energy, you just have to rest. You'll just have to factor in a little bit more rest here and there. Uh, as is appropriate you know you, you don't want to um, you don't want to overwork the physical body across this transit you really do want to be mindful of uh, how you operate with Ketu in your first house because Ketu is the body without the head and the body without the head yeah it does kind of um, operate sort of thing like it's taking in information one of the things I've found about Ketu is, yeah, I think where you, where you have Ketu, Ketu can be quite a sponge-like thing. It can take in a lot of information, actually. But overall, I'm really liking this transit for you. I'm especially liking Rahu in Pisces in the seventh house. That's really great for travel. It's really great for business. It's really great for... You know, I'm kind of thinking about the nakshatras that are here. It, it, and, you know, it is good for, uh, yeah, meeting someone. But it's also great for enjoying being single as well. Rahu in seventh house does love being single too. You know, uh, they don't always need to be with someone. In fact, they quite like doing their own thing. So Virgo, I'm loving this transit for you. I think it's going to be a good one. You can let me know as, as we get in. Come back in a few months and tell me how you, how you get on with this. I'd love to hear how this energy is for you. I want to thank you for stopping by. And we are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Libra Ascendant, Libra Moon or Libra Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Rahu in Pisces will be in your sixth house. Yeah, I'm loving this. Absolutely beautiful transit here for you, Libra. You, you're one of the lucky ones. You've got a really good one here. Um, I've got here, if you are a service professional, you can help a lot of people at this time. Your practice can really grow. This is a beautiful warm-up for Saturn, who will be sixth from Libra. From March 2025 onwards, so you're kind of getting this space ready because Saturn's going to come in here. So this is this is wonderful. I've got here. You see the chaos, and all you want to do is roll up your sleeves and help make this world a better place. Do it, Libra. The world needs you. Yeah, I'm loving this for you, Libra. This is good. Now, Ketu in Virgo will be in your twelfth house. So spiritually, your psychic senses can grow a lot during this transit. Jupiter is also in your eighth house in Taurus. That's from 1st May 2024 onwards. And I've got here, don't think that you don't know enough. Okay, you do know enough. You know everything you need to know to improve life around you. And I've got here, if you need an answer, be still, ask, and the exact answer will come. You'll be shown. You will be amazed at how that works. You will be, and I have this happen with me. I've trained myself into this particular practice of, you know, please guide me. Uh, I, I used to have that as an affirmation for quite a while. Guide me to the truth or guide me to always speak the truth. You know, both guide me to seek the truth and speak the truth. You know, definitely I'm all about that. And uh, But you'll be amazed as to like, just the other day, I ordered a book. I, I googled a particular thing. I don't know how I came to this particular website. I did. And then I was looking up this information. It was about Ayurveda, but it was about the mind. And it was about digesting concepts and ideas. And anyway, and then I ended up getting a book title. And then within minutes, I'm buying the book. 
and I just know that that book is going to be full of transformative things for me but like how answers come and how that book has come to me I know by the time I finish reading that book I'm going to be like this is life changing and the way that that came to me was just so weird or like on my dashboard on YouTube something will just pop up and it's got the exact title of something I need to know and I just click on it and it's like two minutes or something it's amazing these things happen to me all the time Libra you're gonna have an amazing time you're gonna have all these little synchronicities here and there and especially if you're a service professional if you want to make the world a better place you're really gonna get the opportunities and the energy to do so so Libra I'm really excited for you please do enjoy this transit I think it's gonna be a good one for you and we are now gonna welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Moon or Scorpio Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now Rahu in Pisces will be in your fifth house. So you're going to be financially focused, I do believe. You are going to want to increase your wealth and investments. And what I would say here is consult highly recommended experts who are knowledgeable about how to do this. Okay. Um, you might want to find the right mentors and guides who really know a lot about financial type stuff. Yeah, I don't know too much about those things. Um, I've got here, this is an excellent transit for students or for anyone studying. You will be motivated to learn and be creative with the wisdom you attain. Be careful with spending because you might want to, well... I've got here Rahu might want to spend more. It might not be you. It might be Rahu. <laughs> you just blame it on Rahu. Oh, Rahu wanted to spend the money on this. I've got here Rahu might want to spend more across this time. It's true. It's the fifth house. That's what happens there. A lot of money gets spent. Um, because the sun just burns. The sun's just like, well, pff, the sun never runs out of light. You know, it's infinite. So that's why a lot of money, like money gets burnt there. Um, now Ketu in Virgo will be in your but not that it gets meaninglessly burnt like the, the burning is, is very wonderful there in Leo because you know that's that's the house of the king and uh, creativity and, and children and all these beautiful wonderful experiences happen there in Leo they all cost money you know but somehow Leo always has money right so um, so yeah, so enjoy, you know, and, and this could be Rahu in Pisces in your fifth house. I mean, maybe you're just enjoying yourself more. That would be good. Yeah, maybe you need to spend a bit of money, like, and enjoy yourself from time to time. Now, Ketu in Virgo will be in your 11th house. So through networking, you might meet a financial consultant who can help you manage your money better. Yeah, definitely. You've got Ketu there in the 11th bit of networking you're going to find that right person now how you earn or how you bring in big wealth opportunities should sustain across this period see it, it's an interesting one it might be hard to grow the finances a lot uh, it might be a thing of sustaining you will be able to sustain it but equally with Rahu in the fifth you might have inspiration. You might be able to grow things. I would just say be careful and be conservative at this time. That's just my default, you know, because I don't know much about finance. I always just think better save it, you know. That's kind of where I stand on that. I've got here your network might grow and it's possible old contacts may get in touch again. Uh, also, you've got Jupiter in Taurus in the seventh house there. Yeah, so this is a this is a time for meeting people. This is a time for definitely expanding your network, meeting new people, possibly meeting soul tribe people as well. This transit could bring those people in. That is a possibility here. But ultimately, it's it's looking like a good transit for you, Scorpio. I'm excited for this one. And we are now going to welcome Sagittarius. 
Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon or Sagittarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now Rahu in Pisces will be in your fourth house. So what you might find here is that your physical energy might fluctuate across this transit. Sometimes you might feel like doing a lot. Sometimes as Jupiter is in the sixth, you might feel a bit tired. Okay, and what I would say is if your health is, you know, a bit compromised or whatever, you, you don't want to push it, okay, because Jupiter is in the sixth. When Jupiter is in the sixth, Jupiter will expand the good stuff, but equally if there's something not good, Jupiter will expand that too, okay. So that's why I've got the note here, you will want to aim to be healthy in this transit. You'll want to eat well, you know, um, occasionally clean up your diet you know and that's the thing like when you're cleaning up your diet it's fine to um, have periods where you you know don't eat certain things um, but then equally if you enjoy them again that's okay too I've been experimenting with that I've been experimenting with getting off sugar I'm back on the sugar now. <laughs> My neighbors, she gave me these uh, chocolate brownies and I was like, oh, these are so nice. And I went to the same shop where she got them from and I've just bought another packet. There's four in there. Oh my gosh. But like I've discovered, hey, this sugar is actually doing me some good. So I'm having it. And then equally when it starts to not be good, I'll definitely not have them. But yeah, because I haven't had sugar for ages. You know, having some now is all right. And I, I, that, that's what I've found works best. I think there's a book called Intuitive Eating or something like that. I'm into that. I'm into this whole intuitive eating thing. Your body will tell you what it needs. Follow that. You know, you'll, you'll, your body's smart. It'll ask for what it really needs. Um, I've got here, your focus will be on your home. Yeah, if you can be more at home and rest more, that's going to be really ideal. So let's say you're able to work from home. Brilliant. Do that you know um, I've got here this isn't the best transit to be out in the world it's not particularly so if you do have the option I know a lot of people are going back to the office and things like that but if you're one of those people where it makes sense for you to work from home that would actually be really good for you whatever you can do to make life more comfortable is going to be good Rahu in in the fourth house that's comfort you're going to want comfort. You're going to want to nurture yourself. You're going to want to feel good physically. So that's why maybe, you know, you'll have to clean up your diet now and then and things like that. Now, Ketu in, and intuitive eating would be perfect, actually. That, that would work really well. Now, Ketu in Virgo will be in your 10th house. So how you earn money will be sustained throughout this period. Okay, so if you try for promotions at work, it might happen but equally if you try and things aren't happening know that Ketu's energy is kind of suppressing your growth potentially at this time it's just for a short while it's just a year and a half it's not too long but if you find by the way I don't know if you can see the flickering of light there apologies sometimes sometimes it means we have a, a visitor <laughs> Um, let's get back to this shall we uh, yeah if you're trying for a promotion or you're really trying to earn more money or improve or go ahead or all that kind of thing but it's not happening there's just a little bit of suppression energy there on you okay just a little bit but here don't worry keep working Saturn keeps score and he will reward you later okay so you you do everything you know how you see fit but equally if if the rewards aren't coming don't worry they will come in I've got here it's an ideal time for spiritual study and deepening your connection with the all is one absolutely it's a really good time for that Sagittarius this can be a really lovely transit you can definitely make it so thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Capricorn Capricorn welcome thank you so much for joining I'm just checking the time we're okay now Capricorn, I am very glad to bring you some good news. It is about time and this is the kind of good news that you want. You want a year and a half worth of good news and you've got it. 
Okay, you've got Rahu in Pisces, which is going to be in your third house. Now you and Aquarius next door, both of you are Sati Sati. Both of you are having a tough time and both of you are, in my opinion, having two of the very best transits possible. Okay, so this is good. I'm so happy for you. Uh, now Rahu in Pisces in the third is beautiful. Okay, it's a great transit. Rahu will up your confidence, up your courage levels. Your mind will be invigorated. You'll feel excited to learn new things. It's going to feel good to learn new things. Now, if Sadi Sati is getting too much, tune into Rahu energy. You're one of the lucky few who's having a really good Rahu transit. You can create a social media platform or start your business, start a side business, uh, enjoy hobbies for fun. You know, it's not all about business and earning money. What do you like to do? You know, and maybe this is that kind of thing where Rahu in Pisces is going to get you more social again. Rahu in Pisces in the third might get you out more, might get you socializing. Um, perhaps there's a group or a group activity that you're going to pick up and, and you're going to have a lot of fun with. Now, Jupiter in the fifth is great energy for your creativity, for your relationship with your children as well, okay? Or bringing out the inner child in you, you know? And there is this energy here of play and fun and Rahu in the third, you know? Rahu is, we get out with the friends, we have a good time. Social energy, it's, it's really nice. I'm so glad you, you really deserve a good transit here. It's been a long time. Now, Keto in Virgo is going to be in your ninth house. So this is a brilliant transit for learning new things, especially if you are starting a degree program or you're at university or any of that. You'll be able to absorb a lot of academic information at this time and build a lot of new skills. It's an excellent transit for teachers as well. During this transit, you'll be able to pick up any answer you need. So if there's an answer and, and you know, uh, maybe, and especially if you're, yeah, creating this social media platform here as we've got with Rahu in the third, you know, and maybe you haven't had enough time to do the research like me. <laughs> How many times do I start one of these videos and then I'm kind of like thinking on the fly and then I'll be like, I'll just put it by my side and, you know, <laughs> things like that, or I'll just look it up while editing or yeah but if, there, if there's an answer that you need you'll be able to tune in and get that answer it will come to you you'll be amazed Capricorn I'm excited for you I, and look the reality is that Sadi Sadi is still going on but you're at your end phase now you're coming out of it and especially as you get towards the end of next year you're going to feel that Saturnian energy will start to come off It'll change. It'll change, Capricorn, and you have good times ahead of you. You really do. Not long to go now. It's, it's not long at all. All right, Capricorn, you take care out there. Thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Checking the time. We're okay. Uh, Aquarius, this is Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Moon, or Aquarius Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now, Aquarius Moon, you are in Sadi Sati phase, but don't you worry, all of you Aquarius people, you're all getting a very good Rahu transit. Okay, you are getting one of the best transits here. So this is really good news, Aquarius. You need it. I'm, I'm glad to be able to share this with you. So Rahu in Pisces is going to be in your second house. And this is an excellent transit for building wealth and resources. Okay, it's great for speaking as well, speech, speaking up. If you run a social media platform or something like that, this could be a good thing for that. If your Aquarius moon and Sadi Sati is bringing you down, definitely tune into this Rahu energy because it's really good. Now I've got here, you can use this position to teach as well. Rahu's Lord Jupiter is learning a huge amount in the fourth house and that is from 1st May 2024 onwards. Saturn is getting ready to enter Pisces and the good financial and wealth generating habits that you build now will help Saturn make a lot more progress later. Okay, so you're kind of preparing the ground here. You're getting your finances in order so that when Saturn arrives, 
you can do some serious work of, of building the wealth. Okay, so that's good. That's really good. Now, Ketu in Virgo will be in your eighth house. Now, this is really good too. Psychic or intuitive gifts could crack open for you at this time. And it will be easy for you to let go of things. This is beautiful energy. You'll be able to let go of old trauma, old relationships. You'll be able to fully digest hard experiences and release them. Okay, this is so good. This is a time for you to surrender to divine will. It will feel so good to you. You know, and when you surrender, one, one thing I've been experiencing is the surrender of desire. Just like when you don't have any desire, wow, you feel free. Like it, that feels really good. <laughs> I know the Buddhists go on about it, but I'm, I'm experiencing it and it's great. <laughs> like when you really experience it, you know, uh, yeah, I, I get that. And I, I'm, I'm at this place where it's like the divine will, can like the divine knows me better than I know myself. It'll come up with something way better. So it's like, why do I, like desiring from one's ego is not as cool. Like it's, you know, it's a bit lame. <laughs> but when, when you allow God to do the desiring for you kind of thing, like, yeah, that's, that's great. And I, I mean, you, I think you'll be able to do some incredible spiritual work here, Aquarius. I, I'm very excited for this transit for you. Uh, and, and, you know, especially if you're an Aquarius moon, You've been going through a really tough time and I want to wish you well, Aquarius. I want you to hang in there and, you know, know that you're being transformed into a diamond. Know that you can do it. Know that you're made of tough stuff. And these are the times that make a person, you know, when it's easy and all oh, the money's flowing and that's not a character building time. And it's the character building times that are really special. They make us somebody special, you know, the character building times do. The easy times, and that doesn't do much. <laughs> All right. Well, I was just wrapping up anyway, Aquarius. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Hang in there if it's, if it's a tough time, but know that it's a character building time. Know that you are going to, uh, you know, you're going to come out of this transit, this Sati Sati transit, if you're in... If you're an Aquarius moon, you're going to come out of this a new person. You really are a stronger person. And you're going to have mastered a whole bunch of stuff. You're going to be, you're going to be patient. Patience is a virtue. Imagine mastering patience. Saturn will teach you how to be patient, that's for sure. All right. Well, thank you so much, Aquarius. We are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon or Pisces Sun. It's per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now, Rahu in Pisces will be in your first house. Pisces, this is your energy. This is all about you. So this is a time where it's necessary for you to be more self-focused. Okay, there is energy here for you to experiment with who you are and who you want to be going forward. And this is something that I've actually been looking at with some recent stuff of my own that, you know, there could be difficult situations or problematic things or, or whatever it is. But what matters more is who you become through the struggle. That's where you want to keep your focus. Okay. Who are you becoming through the struggle? And I've got here, if loving yourself means saying no to others, then say no. And if you say no out of denial, avoidance, or running away energy, then it may not be effective. You might be kicking the can down the road. You might have to encounter it again later. Okay, let's look at those energies again. If you say no out of denial, out of avoidance, out of running away energy, out of sticking your head in the sand energy, out of no, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to know, I don't want to know. 
you can't do that, then it may not be effective. Now if you say no out of love for you and the other person, and it could be a tough love, but if it's very genuine and it's very authentic, that no, if that no is full of integrity and courage and good things, right? If it's a good, high quality no, you will have power and energy to build the next steps, the next stage of your life. You are being given confidence to be you, okay? With this Rahu in Pisces energy. I've got here, that is what you incarnated to do, to enjoy fearlessly being you, okay? So I'm loving your Rahu here in, in Pisces. Let's take a look at Ketu in Virgo. Ketu in Virgo will be in your seventh house. So there is a natural suppression energy on relationships during this transit. Now, if you're in a committed relationship, you may occasionally need to help your partner or that kind of thing. Uh, if single, this is not the best energy to meet or to marry. Okay, now I'm not saying you can't meet anyone because you would be amazed. K through in the seventh uh, is capable of producing marriages and all kinds of things. You know, it'll, it'll bring soulmate from past life, and you know, K through in the seventh can be profound. A lot of times, people will see K through in the seventh, they'll say, "Oh, you won't marry," or "No, that's not true." I've seen a lot of people. You know, things line up and it's meant to be more so than, than other placements sometimes. But generally we can say if you're single, it's not the best energy to meet or marry. You know, I mean, it's, it's not the focus right now uh, is, is what I'm in a general sense saying, okay. If you've got a strong desire that, look, I need to, you know, be with someone or be with, a person or whatever there's some reason for that strong desire and that might be something you need to investigate but you know uh, but maybe it's not all right now let's have a look here you can psychologically master other people yes at this time though it's true so when you've got Ketu in the seventh house I've got here you could become a great student of other people at this time and Jupiter is in the third in Taurus but the main thing I'm looking at here is Ketu in the seventh house some of the best psychologists uh, that I have loved their work and read all their books and I'm crazy about them, Ketu in Libra. They are Ketu in Libra people or Ketu in the seventh house. Now you're Ketu in Virgo in the seventh house here. So that's very analytical. Yeah, you can really, uh, yeah, you can, as I've got written here, I mean, it's a, it's a funny line. Probably doesn't sound too good, but you can psychologically master other people at this time. That doesn't sound too good, but but the truth of it is, you, you could really become a whiz at psychology through this transit, like really get good at reading other people, working out psychological dynamics. You know, you're, you're that wise person who's kind of on the outside seeing everything and just, you can just see it, you just know. So it's an interesting one. When it comes to other people, it's, you've got more of this observer quality going on. But when it comes to yourself, you're right in there working with you. Rahu in Pisces, you're working with you, you're self-focused, you're journaling, you're getting to know your emotions, you're getting to know how you operate, you're getting to know how you tick. You're getting to know what makes you anxious, when are you courageous, all the different little nuances and things, you're figuring all this stuff out about who you are and how you operate. If you can learn to really, if you can learn what no is, what a high quality no is, you can look up, um, I think if you type in Eckhart Tolle high quality no, he's got a video about it. There's a lot of people who've got good videos about this, but yeah, this is something that I have been experimenting with and working with, and I might have mentioned it last time as well, I can't remember, but if you say no, just out of a purity of 
that it's well it's it's a no you know it's just it's a no it's not a, and as I say, not out of denial, avoidance, or running away. Sometimes some people will use no as a weapon or to be mean or to be harsh. You don't want to be doing that either. You, a, a neutral no. There we go. High quality no is what Eckhart calls it. But I'm going to call it a neutral no. That can actually be a thing that takes you up. And you have power and, and energy and ability to, to do things. It can be quite incredible. Now, Pisces moon people in the Sadi Sati, if you're in that phase, hang in there. We will talk about it uh, more in the future. I, I might actually uh, start to wrap up now. How are we doing for time? Yeah, it is my bedtime now. It's starting to get quite late. But if I can offer you any wise words or anything like that, do you know, I actually can um, just recommend a book to you, The Greatness of Saturn. A therapeutic myth. I'll see if I can get the camera to focus on that. Oh, is it going to do it? There we go. If you can read this, Robert E. Svoboda. I do believe, I'll just try and, yeah, it's focus back on me. Um, this is a Saturn remedy. I've read it once, but I should probably read it every day. <laughs> I should read it. I should read this like, what am I? I'm in the Saturn Mahadash. I'd re I should read it 20 times, once each year or something. I don't know. But apparently it's, it's an actual sat Saturn remedy. And it's a really good thing to read. I enjoyed it. I remember when I read it, I quite liked it. Yeah, it was good. I just realized I got a piece of paper in there. Um, yeah, we might, I might bring this up next time. But this is one of the, the remedies I did think about. But if I think of other remedies for you uh, I, I will bring those up but Pisces and anyone who stayed to watch the entire video I want to thank you so much for tuning in let's enjoy this Rahu transit guys and let's see if we can do the whole come together thing come together I to me that is really what this energy is about we need to come together we need to unite we need to um, change life so that it's good for everybody not just a few people and we can all come together and, and do that in, in whatever ways we can energy permitting you know I understand not everyone's got time or money or physical health or these things I know what it's like to be short on all of those things I know that really well uh, and that's governed by the stars you know if you're in a Sadi Sathya, if you're in a Saturn Mahadasha, it can be like that. It can be difficult. But we've got to hang in there and we've got to do our best. So thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you next time.